when I look back at 2022, when I reflect on it, I could look at all of the crappy things that happened and say, wow, that was a lot of crappy things. What a terrible year 2022 was. Thank God it's over. Or I can look back at it and say, that was incredible. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Flow Over Fear podcast, where it is our mission to help you to rise above fear and realize your ultimate potential in leadership and life. I'm your host, Adam Hill, and it is my goal to share with you the human side of high performance. My guests share their experience with fear, anxiety, struggle, challenge, and most importantly, despite all of it, how they rose above it to achieve incredible results. So if you're ready to rise up, let's get started. Hello, fellow Flowster. Welcome to Flow Over Fear and welcome to 2023. I'm excited you're here and I've got some exciting news to share by popular demand because it's been requested of me. I'm adding a third episode to this podcast every week. And this has been something I've been doing on YouTube for a while now, but I'm bringing it to the audio podcast as well. Uh, this is uh, essentially, it's traditionally been a training episode somewhere where I've shared some of my thoughts on a particular subject, um, how you can rise above fear. But what it's really turned into is I share three things, three ways, three tactics that you can uh, implement right now to help you rise above fear, to achieve your most awesome self um, and, uh, and to achieve greater flow. And so I'm calling this series three things. Why? Because I like the number three. Uh, three tends to be, uh, well, first I'm a triathlete. So yeah, I love the number three. Um, so it's, it tends to be associated with things that I can remember very easily. And most of us can remember three things, uh, whereas we can't remember 12, which is the reason that that's, that's why I'm not calling this series 12 things, because I don't think a lot of people would watch it and it would probably be an hour and a half long. Um, so, um, I'm calling it three things and we'll just go with that. How about that? Anyway, uh, in this first episode, because we're at the beginning of the year, I want to talk about goal setting. And I'm going to talk about three things that you can do to quit proof your yearly goals in 2023. And, um, and a lot of people right now at this very moment are setting their New Year's resolutions or, or, or they're on the path or they're still in that honeymoon phase with their New Year's resolutions or their goals for the year or whatever it may be, whatever they want to call it. And the sad reality is, is that, it, it, I mean, it's so great that people are setting these goals because there are so many nuggets of value in those goals. Um, they're, they're, there's just so much opportunity, so much possibility in that. Um, but the sad reality is, is that uh, through one study, 92% of those New Year's resolutions will go unfulfilled. They'll, they'll just, uh, they, they'll fizzle out. Uh, 92% of people are going to quit on their goals. And that's sad. I mean, think about all of these goals that go unfulfilled that could have been something that add value to the world. And I want to share some things that will help you to not let that statistic be you, to give you a little more opportunity to improve on that um, and how to set these goals in such a way that you can continue to be disciplined in spite of or even because, or maybe even because of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day -day basis that come at you uh, that you can't control uh, or that annoy you or distract you. Um, and that's really the reason why we, we tend to quit on those goals. We get distracted or we get shiny object syndrome or, or what have you. Um, you know, 2022, when I, when I, and one of the first things I want to say, and this is not one of those three things. Um, but it's a bonus. Let's call it a bonus. So yeah, you get four things today. Um, but I'm still calling this series three things. So don't, uh, don't hold me to four things. This is just a bonus because it's the beginning of the year and I'm really, really, really nice. Anyway, the first thing you want to do before you even set those goals is reflect on the previous year. And there's two ways in which we can reflect on the previous year. We can, we can look at 2022 and we can look at all of the crappy things that happened to us. After all, 365 days is a long time. I mean, it's, it's enough time where good things and bad things are going to happen. So if we look back on it, we can look back and we say, look at all these crappy things that happened to me. Look at all of these, 
circumstances that hit me. Look at all of this crap that happened and, 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 and how it affected me and it affected my life and it affected who I am. Uh, look how it just, it hit me. And, you know, it's, that's the attitude of really life happening to you. And I'm not immune to that. I've, I've had that before. <laughs> I have that. I, I, I mean, I probably have that daily, but I used to have it as my go-to default when, you know, uh, more than a decade ago, that used to be the way I lived. I used to just look at things like, God, thank God that year's over because that was crappy. Um, hopefully next year will be better. And that hopefully next year will be better as if the year would be the primary driver of my happiness. I mean, I see that meme all the time that says, oh, thank God 2022 is over or, you know, or, or, or anything like that, that, that just shows that the year is responsible somehow for our bad attitude. <laughs> it's, it's strange to think that way, but you know, uh, the year is not responsible for that. Um, in reality, we're responsible for how we feel or how thing, how we interpret things or our perspective on things. Because we can also reflect on the good that happened in the last year. And, um, and I know there's a lot of people that have faced significant challenges and are facing significant challenges. Um, I'm facing many significant challenges that I can't share here, you know, both personally and professionally. Um, but I'm committed to working through them. I'm committed to staying disciplined and consistent in spite of, and maybe even because of those challenges so that I can rise above and be better tomorrow than I was today. And if, if, and I understand that a lot of people ha are still in the midst of that challenge and it's hard to find that happiness. And I get that. Um, I get that. And it's important to feel those feelings that you might be feeling right now, but don't live there. I mean, as someone who's come from that sense of feeling hopelessness and digging the hole so deeply down that I'm living in that hopelessness, don't go there. Don't live there. Find a way to look into the things that are going to make you happy. Make yourself take responsibility and ownership for your own happiness over time. Feel the feelings, of course. Because with sadness, with the doubt, with the, with the negative feelings, with all of that come, the, that's where you can experience the positive feelings as well. Um, you know, 2022 is probably one of the more challenging years that I've had in my life um, because of just a lot of circumstances that, that, you know, were outside of my control and, uh, you know, affected our family. It affected uh, uh, that, that outside circumstances that affected the business that I run. Um, but despite those channel challenges, I remember setting goals in 2022 that were big. And I remember that I planted seeds even long before that. And when I look back at 2022, when I reflect on it, I could look at all of the crappy things that happened and say, wow, that was a lot of crappy things. What a terrible year 2022 was. Thank God it's over. Or I can look back at it and say, that was incredible. Uh, despite all these challenges I faced, I launched my new book. Um, which is also now available on, Am on audio and available on Amazon. So you can check it out there. Shifting gears from anxiety and addiction to a triathlon world championship and shameless plug. Uh, my wife and I are closer than ever because we'd gone through those challenges and we were intentional on, com on becoming more close. Uh, I launched this new transformation coaching business uh, that um, where we have a group coaching element where I'm helping people to rise above fear and achieve their most awesome self. It's, 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 it's incredible. And I'm, I'm excited for that. Um, and that's led to me <laughs> launching this podcast flow over fear, which, which is already being received incredibly well and is continuing to grow and prosper so that I'm able to add another episode in every week and, uh, and, and share in my passion and share in this meaningful message that everybody needs to hear that they can rise above fear. They don't have to fear fear and they don't have to live in it but they can rise above it. I was able to do a 70.3 triathlon this year with, with a group of GoBundance friends that I have. Go Brun GoBundance is a, is, is a tribe of, of healthy, wealthy, generous men who, who come together and, uh, and share in, in, their, you know, in their experiences. And this was one of those times where we did a, 
a 70.3 together. And I was also able to do it with a, with a group of athletes that I coached from a triathlon, from, from a triathlon club, like 20 athletes that I was working in a group coaching session with all finishing this race. I got to finish the race myself and also watch them finish and achieve their dream for the year. How cool is that? And of course, the business that I was running that I thought was facing challenges at the beginning of the year ended up having it, one of its best years on record, the highest revenue that it's ever had um, and gross profit that it's, that it's ever had. And, you know, we finished off the year strong and on path to being a more sustainable company as we enter into our hundredth year in business. Think about that a hundred years. So looking back, it's, 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 you know, and, and those were all seeds that were planted, you know, a long time ago. Uh, those were all at one time, you know, these dreams or, or what others, what some people might call new year's resolutions to start a podcast, to write a book, to do something like that. Well, the difference was, is I implemented the tools to actually remain consistent with it, even when it got hard, even when it got challenging, especially when it got hard. And, um, and that's, and the reason I wanted to share that is not to kind of brag about everything I achieved in 2022. Um, it's more to show that when we implement the right tools to, uh, to facing, to, to, to putting together our goals, when we implement the right tools in the right way, you know, even when it's hard, even when things are challenging, even when we have some of the hardest times in our lives, especially in those times, we can remain consistent and we can build the resilience and the grit to push through that will strengthen us in the future. It is literally an upward spiral of how we can grow and develop this. This is like the nature of personal development here. This is how we do it. And so really without further ado, I'll share these three things with you uh, on how to, on how to uh, uh, set your goals so that you can be quit proof on your goals. Um, and stay tuned because within those goals, first I want to provide some contests context. So I'm not trying to, you know, be dickish here by saying this, but, uh, stay tuned because in, uh, 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 within one of these items, I'm going to share a number of different books that you should buy and read, uh, that will help you on your journey of setting the right types of goals and how to, how to get the context on that. But I want, I want to, I want to share that piece first before I share that. So the first of three things, uh, that will help you to quit proof your goals this year is to provide clarity to those goals. Um, now th think of the goals that we have when we set new year's resolutions. A lot of times when you look at why those goals are not achieved throughout the year, um, is well, because a lot of times they're just not clear and they're not compelling and there's no conviction within them. So there's three, there's three C's there. There's clarity, there's conviction, and there's compelling. Um, and a lot of times those goals lack those for the person. So when we think of news, New Year's resolution, when, when that happens, you know, it tends to come towards the end of the year where people think to themselves, oh man, I got to get my crap together. I got to, I got to change this, or I got to make a new me. I got to do this because why? Well, there really isn't a why. Maybe it's because that's what they think society expects of them or so-and-so expects of them. So then really it's not their goal, right? So one of the first steps of clarifying your goal is to really, really consider and really reflect on, is this really your goal or is it somebody else's goal for you? Or is it something that social media or the news or something like that is telling you that you need to have a goal for the new car, the, you know, the house in whatever city is, is popular right now. The, uh, um, you know, do you really, do you really want that and why, or are you just trying to live up to somebody else's standard of what looks good to you because it, uh, um, because it feels good to, you know, live somebody else's dream. Uh, so you really have to ask yourself that, is it somebody else's dream or is it yours? And if it's something, and, and the way to measure that is, is it externally motivated or are, are these, 
you know, is this a dream that, that is being pushed on you from the outside? Is it external or is it really coming from the heart? And the way we know that if it's coming from the heart is if when we think of it, we can put a very powerful meaning behind it. It means something to us. There's a story behind it that, that's meaningful. You know, what is the meaning behind that for you? For me, with within, you know, starting in, in, in triathlon, for example, the meaning there was that I, I could have just said, I want to get healthy. I want to get six pack abs because that's what, uh, that's what society ex expects of, of me. And, and, uh, or, or that's what, that's what it's is said is, is super sexy right now. But for triathlon, it was like, that's something that I've told myself that I could never do. And the meaning of, of actually having gotten sober a year prior, which was something else I had never done. I had this point of reference of, wow, when I do something that I never thought that I could do, I power up, I become stronger. I become a better version of who I am. And, and I remember so vividly being, telling myself that I could never do an Ironman triathlon. I could never race in that. Um, and that was the compelling meaning for me to want to do it because I told myself that I couldn't, I wanted to prove myself wrong. And in the process, I found joy in that journey. Uh, so that's the first point of clarity is finding that meaning. And is it aligned with your core values? Is it, is, does it, does it, uh, uh, evoke some measure of fear and excitement in equal measure for you? Because that, that fear and excitement, um, are what tells you that you're pushing beyond your, you might be pushing beyond your comfort zone. Or it might be something you want to do to grow. Uh, so that's how, you know, if that dream is in your heart. And that's the first point of getting clear on the goal is knowing that it means something to you in your heart. And that's where conviction comes from. And then the, the other part of being clear on it is, is that goal is, is, is the goal that you're setting? Is it smart? And no, this isn't like, okay, is it not intelligent? Yeah. You want to be intelligent. Don't make your goal jumping off a cliff and trying to roll down and survive. That's not a good goal. Um, but a, a, a smart goal is also, so you want an intelligent goal. Yes. But you also want a smart goal, which is S M A R T it means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. And so if, if you're setting this goal, it has to be those five parts. Otherwise it's not meaningful. I mean, think of all the people that start the year and say, I, I just got to get my crap together. That's my new year's resolution. What does that mean? What does success look like? What does getting your crap together mean? Oh, I need to lose weight. You need to lose weight? How much? What, what why? You know, what's the perfect, what, what, what's the purpose behind that? And what, and, and, and what's the, what does success look like? If you don't know what success looks like, then your only outcome is failure. So to be smart, you need to actually make it specific. What is that goal specifically? You know, what is that goal? I want to race in an Ironman triathlon by the end of the year. I want to start this coaching business by, uh, by October 31st, 2023 and generate this much revenue or have this many coached clients or whatever it may be. Make it specific, make it measurable so that you know what success looks like. Make sure it's achievable. You will probably not be able to fire a rocket ship up to Mars and take your dog to live there within this next year. That's not a realistic or achievable goal at this point. I'm sorry. I hate to be the one to tell you that. Not to say it's not realistic, maybe many years down the line. Hell, I mean, if you're resourceful enough, maybe you can accomplish it in a year. I don't know. But, but again, make sure that it's achievable. Make sure that you're, you're setting your standards uh, to challenge yourself, but also not, uh, not set yourself up for failure that you can't achieve it. Um, relevance, you know, you want to make sure that it's relevant. That's where we get into, are you convicted in it? Or do you have, uh, is it aligned with your core values? Does it have meaning for you? And then of course, timely is, is it, uh, um, is it w by when do you want to achieve this goal? So the th second thing, that you want your goal to have this, uh, uh, in order for it to be, to work is you want to organize for flow. Um, you want to organize for flow. So how, what does that look like? Well, many people set these big goals for the year 
And then they just try to pursue them, right? Without a plan, without any kind of point of reference or, or anything like that, they just try to go after it. So if their goal is to, you know, do an Ironman triathlon, well, I'm going to start running today. Well, okay, you start running. And then something bad happens or something, you, you start getting hurt or, or, or something like that. And then you stop because you don't, you, you, you got held up and there's no real next step or there's no real, no real way to define that. But one of the reasons that a lot of people fail or, or, um, or don't, or, or miss the opportunity to succeed, let's say that on their new year's resolutions or their goals is because of, um, well, because of distraction, because of complacency, when does that happen? It tends to happen around February or March of, of the year because they're setting that goal in January. And the reason is, is because we tend to have, when it comes to goals, an attention span of about 90 days. There's no coincidence that many fitness programs do the 90 day program or the 12 week program because they understand the psychology of knowing that people have an attention span of 90 days. And that's about as much as they can handle uh, from their attention span. So the best way, uh, and I hate this word, but the best way to hack this uh, with your one year or longer term goals is to take that longer term goal and, uh, and, and chunk it down into a 90 day goal. And this is a concept that would come from the book, uh, traction by Gina Wickman in which they call it rocks. They call these goals rocks. Um, and they're 90 day goals where you could set those goals and they're achievable. They're smart. So once you achieve them, you reflect on them and you say, okay, I've made it there. And it progresses you toward your one year or longer term goals. And then you set the next one after uh, the next set of rocks that uh, uh, every quarter. And typically you want to have somewhere between three, five, and seven of those, of those goals. Um, so check out the book traction by Gino Wickman, and that will help you to more clearly define your one year goals, your 90 day rocks, and the next one down, which is you want to break those uh, rocks down into weekly tasks, um, weekly things that you need to accomplish in order to achieve your rocks or your one year goal or get you on the path to achieve your big long term vision. And by the way, there's a great book that you can read too, in addition to traction that will help you on your longer term goal on what would call, what you would call your BHAG, uh, your big, hairy, audacious goal, or what I would call your big, brave and clear dream. The thing that really fires you up. And that's called the vivid vision, uh, vivid, vivid vision by Cameron Harold is it, it helps you to define what that, that dream looks like and get clarity on it. So that helps you with the clarity piece. And then once you have uh, the big dream, that big, hairy, audacious goal or that BBC dream, and you break it down into those yearly goals, the 90-day uh, rocks, the weekly tasks, um, then you can get your daily list, your daily list of things that you can do. You could pull that directly from your weekly, uh, your weekly to-dos. Just pull that there and say, this is the, these are the things that I'm going to accomplish today. And typically you'll just want to have one to three things on that list so that you can continue to consistently make progress. If things are really challenging, maybe it's just one thing on that list today, but man, that one thing, and maybe that one thing just takes five minutes to do, but it still takes you that step forward. If you're in a really challenging time, maybe some days you might be able to do three or five, knock, knock a whole bunch off because you're in that flow, but just understand that daily, daily, you want to make those, uh, make that progress. And you want to give yourself the opportunity to make progress. And if you want to learn more about those daily, what is the one thing kind of goals that you want to do today to get yourself closer, read the one thing by Gary Keller. The one thing will help you to, uh, uh, to really prioritize your goal of like, what is the one thing that I can do right now that can, you know, help me to get closer to my goals. Um, so read those books. So vivid vision traction and the one thing or the, or the three books that you can read this year to help you really, really hone in on your goal setting and, uh, and get that, those goals, bulletproof, bullet, bulletproof, not bulletproof, bulletproof. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's, but so, so pick up those books and then, and then, you know, really try to think about that in terms of a funnel when you're organizing for flow, uh, I would call this the prioritization funnel because you start with your big goal. Um, you, 
you drop your big, hairy, audacious goal in there. And then it starts to work around in the funnel. And then it goes down and it creates yearly goals. It, and then it creates 90 day rocks. And then you, you narrow it down. You narrow down that focus even further to get to the weekly goals. And then you narrow that focus down further to get to the one thing, the one thing that you can accomplish today. And so that's kind of how that funnel spits out the next step for you. It makes it very, uh, uh, very intuitive to do that. And it sets you up with a consistent path toward your goal. And then the final, the third thing in this list of three things on how to, um, how to, how to bulletproof your goals for the year um, is to measure it. Uh, that's the M in smart, right? You want to measure your progress. Uh, you want to, you want to make sure you're having measurables or key performance indicators, whatever you want to call it to make sure that you're reflecting on it. And, um, and the way you want to do that is, is we, and, and the reason you want to, you want to be intentional about your measurements is you want to measure how far you've come. You want to measure your progress. Uh, we get in the habit of comparing ourselves to other people. And when we're comparing ourselves to other people or who we want to be in the future, it gets really frustrating because we don't yet see ourselves as meeting our own expectations in that regard. But when we measure ourselves against who we once were, we're actually seeing the achievements. We're changing our perspective on how far we've come. And so that's an important way to measure is to think of the measurements that really help you to measure how far you've come. And that will help you to set goals for how far you want to go into the immediate future and the long-term future. But thank you for, uh, and, and if you want to read more about that one, there's another great book that you can read about that uh, called The Gap and the Gain by Dan Sullivan. And he helps you to actually learn more about um, uh, about, about that comparison process, about, about where we compare ourselves to who we once were versus comparing ourselves to where we want to be or other people or other people's achievement. It's called the gap in the game. Uh, but thank you for joining me on this episode. I hope you got a lot of value from it. I hope you'll join me next time. Uh, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week when I talk about three things. We'll continue to do, uh, uh, I'm continuing to double down on the interviews that we're doing here also. So, um, uh, so we've got some great interviews coming up. Those are released every Tuesday. Uh, where we talk to people who have experienced, uh, you know, significant challenges, but also uh, excelled and achieved great things in their lives. And then, I, of course, I recap those episodes, give a quick 10 to 15 minute recap. And the third episode, which I'm introducing just now, which I hope you've enjoyed, is this Three Things uh, podcast. Thank you so much for joining me on Flow Over Fear. Look forward to catching you next time. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the Flow Over Fear podcast. If you'd like to learn more about getting into flow and learn the foundations of flow, I have a free video series on my website at www.adamcliffordhill.com called The Foundations of Flow. Feel free to go there and download it and start your journey to rising above fear and achieving greater flow in your life. And if you like this episode, and I'm guessing you did if you stuck around for this long, then please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and you will receive notifications when I have new interviews, new recaps, and new trainings that pop up on YouTube. Thanks again for joining us.